Hello, welcome to our class on the book of Ezekiel. So if you would please turn in your Bibles to Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel. Uh, we have a syllabus, um, and each week we'll be adding notes. Those of you that are watching on the webcast, you can get the notes online and download them. That would be wonderful. And each week we will uh, get these uh, for those of you here, uh, there'll be three-hole punch. When you come in, just pick up your notes, and you can add them along as we go along. As we usually try to do in these classes, we try and teach for about 45 minutes, and then we take about a 10, 15-minute break, and then we try and do a, another 45-minute teach, and we try and get out of here by 9. Um, but uh, this is the first time we've ever taught the book of Ezekiel. So uh, if you can be flexible, but that's what we'll, generally that's what we'll try and do, but I don't want to commit myself that we'll always do that because uh, this is the first time we're teaching the book, so we'll see how things go, all right? So, here we are in Ezekiel chapter 1, and to this first uh, hour, we're going to look at an introduction, a background, and overview of this book of Ezekiel. And uh, I have these here on the screen, but also in your Bible, you can read this. We'll read the first three verses. Ezekiel 1, 1. It says... Now it came about in the thirtieth year, on the fifth day of the fourth month, while I was by the river Chebar among the exiles, the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. On the fifth of the month, in the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's exile, the word of Yahweh came expressly to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans, by the river Chebar, and there the hand of Yahweh came upon him. This is the introduction of the book of Ezekiel. Um, first off, uh, you see here that he was, it says in verse 3, that he was a priest of the son of Buzi. That means he would have been uh, from the tribe of Levi, and he would have been a priest, he would have been on the Aaron. Aaronic line. In verse 1 where it says now about in the 30th year, I think most commentaries and I think I believe that this means uh, Ezekiel's 30th year, the 30th year of his life. He was 30 years old. Uh, here's a little extra. It doesn't cost you anything if you keep a finger here. Look at um, Numbers chapter 4 real quick. Numbers chapter 4 is uh, the, where Moses gives the assignments for the Levites um, to, the, to the, the Levitical um, line of the families of Kohath, Merari, and uh, Gershon. And in Numbers 4, when it talks about this, it says in verse 2, Take a census of the descendants of Kohath from among the sons of Levi by their families, by their father's household from how old? 30 years and upward. Then you have in verse 22 and 23 is regarding the, 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 those of Gershon from the tribe of Levi. And it says in verse 23, from how, how many years old? 30 years. And then you have the same thing in verse 30 that from Merari, 30 years and old and upward. Um, and it Many believe that that was the age at which they started their service in the temple, in the Levites and the priests. And so, um, is that significant that that's how old Ezekiel is when he begins his ministry, when he begins his revelation? I think it's pretty unique. So, that's just a little bit about the 30th year, Ezekiel's 30th year. And back to Ezekiel 1, it came about in the 30th year on the fifth day of the fourth month. And we'll look at that in a little bit about what that means. But it says that he was by the river Chebar among the exiles. And then the heavens opened and he saw the visions of God. And again in verse 3 it says, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar. The book of Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, the entire book takes place not in Jerusalem, but the, takes place in Babylon, in the land of the Chaldeans, in Babylon. 
Uh, Ezekiel was part of those that were exiled. They were captured, captive by the Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. And he came with the captivity that came during the reign of King Jehoiakim. Along with, you will see, and we'll read this in a bit, uh, 10,000 Judeans came with him. Um, here is, and this is in your notes, a little map of this nation of Babylon. And I just want to give you just a perspective. Uh, I, I like maps that kind of help me put in vision where I'm at. So uh, let me do my little, uh, put changes to a highlighter here. So I, this is the fancy stuff I can do. All right, highlighter. Okay, here is Jerusalem over here. All right, and this is the land of Israel. Over here is the capital city of Babylon. You don't see it on there? It's, it's there. You probably can't see it real well. It's because it's, I've gone yellow. I probably should have done a different color. Oh, maybe, maybe, let me change colors. Let me do a, let's see, what, do I have any option colors? Pointer options. Uh, ink color. What if I went with uh, blue? Will this work? How's that? See that? There we are. Okay. There we are. Blue. The ladies like blue. Okay. So there's Jerusalem and Babylon. Now, I can tell you as the crow flies from Babylon to Jerusalem, it's approximately 500 miles. It's about 500 miles from Jerusalem to Babylon. So that's about the distance that they were taken into captivity. Now, there between these cities at, directly is desert. So they never traveled like an airplane flight directly. The way they would travel from this area of Ur of the Chaldees, the Chaldeans, to the land of Israel and back is they would have carried them from Jerusalem. They would have gone up this way up to here around Haran, and then they would have come down. This is the Euphrates River, and they would have followed this that way. That's the way they would have traveled. So probably, probably travel-wise, it's more like closer to 750 to 1,000 miles that they would have traveled, where they would have taken 10,000 exiles in captivity over to Babylon from Jerusalem when, during this time of, of King Jehoiachin. Um, now, it says that he's in the river Chebar. He's near the river Chebar. Um, I've read different things. Nobody's quite sure exactly where this is. But the best I can understand, some say it's southeast of Jerusalem. And one uh, thing says it's, here's the city Nippur, which is southeast of Jerusalem, that it was a channel. Here's the Euphrates River. This is the Euphrates that goes up. And that it was a channel that came off the Euphrates River southeast of Babylon near this city of Nippur. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but uh, that's what the, uh, most of the commentaries say. So he was along the river Chebar here in Babylon. And this is where Ezekiel gets the vision. And you're he'll, he'll going to see he gets many visions throughout this book, amazing visions, incredible revelation that was given to this man Ezekiel. Now, uh, the entire book, I said, is, is from the point of view of being in exile. They are in captivity. They have been taken out of their land, and they've been brought over, and the whole book is in this area of exile. And just another little tidbit, I, I thought it would be fun to read this. If you, again, keep your finger in Ezekiel or a ribbon or something, and go to Psalm. 137. Psalm 137, um, the author is not given, I don't know who wrote Psalm 137, but Psalm 137 was written by someone in exile by a river in Babylon. So uh, this kind of gives you, and it kind of gives you the, the heart-wrenching uh, and we're going to see some of this as we go through Ezekiel. Uh, the yearning for Jerusalem and the absolute uh, the sin and idolatry that had been taking place, um, how 
how God just yearns and the imagery that's given here in Ezekiel about what happens. And I thought this, this psalm really kind of sums up, I think, the, people's, the, the, the people who were seeking truth and seeking what Jerusalem and what the temple really was supposed to represent. I think this psalm was wonderful. Psalm 137.1, it says, By the rivers of Babylon. Again, this was, was written in Babylon in exile. We sat down and wept. We remembered Zion. They sat down by the river and they wept. Upon the willows in the midst of we hung our harps. For there our captors demanded of us songs and our tormentors mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing Yahweh's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, may my right hand forget her skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you and if I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Yahweh, against the sons of Edom, the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it to its very foundation. O daughter of Babylon, you devastated one, how will blessed be the one who repays you with the recompense with which you have repaid us? How blessed be the one who seizes and dashes your little ones against the rock. This is from someone in Babylon, in the exiles, saying, oh, how can I sing a song of Zion in a foreign land? You know, that they were in a foreign land, and this, this uh, incident of Edom, where the nation of Edom was kind of cheering on the Babylonians to destroy Jerusalem when it happened. Raise it! Raise it! Destroy it! This comes up in Ezekiel later on when he gives his prophecy against the nation of Edom, how they were ridiculing God's city and God's people. But anyways, that's a little tad bit. I just, when I'm thinking about someone in exile sitting by the river, I thought of Psalm 137, and I thought it would be a good psalm to look at to start. So back to Ezekiel chapter 1. So Ezekiel was a priest in the land of the Chaldeans in exile. Apparently, he was one of the Judeans taken captive to Babylon under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar. This was the second exile of Jews from Jerusalem. Last night in our Berean Fellowship, we looked at the first chapter of Daniel. The first exile, actually, of Judeans that made this journey from Jerusalem over to Babylon uh, happened in the third year of Jehoiakim's, Jehoiakim's reign, and that was the, some of the youth, not, not as many people as this time with Jehoiakim, but that's when Daniel, Azariah, uh, Mishael, and Hananiah were all taken into captivity in Babylon. That happened about eight years before Ezekiel was taken into captivity in Babylon, just to give you an idea of the Daniel and Ezekiel. Daniel was taken to the capital city of Babylon, and while Ezekiel is in this area of Chabar, probably by the city of Nippur, Daniel has already achieved greatness in the city of Babylon of what you read in the book of, of Daniel. So it's, it's, it's a neat thing. Daniel actually comes up in Ezekiel. He mentions Daniel. So it's a, an interesting thing there, but this is the second time that the children of Israel were taken into captivity. And a few times during this time, he will refer back to this time while he's by the, uh, by the river Chabar. And, and in the second hour, we're going to really examine this vision that he gets that is the starting vision. But several times throughout the book, he refers back to this time when he first received this revelation of from Yahweh. Now, turn in your Bibles to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. Uh, we'll come back to Ezekiel, but I'd like to spend a little time here setting the background of what was going on in the nation uh, during this time. And I have uh, these references in your notes. And in your notes, I put um, in parentheses 2 Chronicles chapter 36. Check, 2 Chronicles 36 parallels what we're going to look here in 2 Kings. We're not going to look at 2 Chronicles. If you would like to read that on your own uh, before next week, that'd be a great chapter to read 
before uh, the next one, just to kind of get an idea from Chronicles what's said about this time period that we're going to be looking at. But here in 2 Kings chapter 23, and I'd like to start in verse 28. It says, Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah? Josiah, Josiah was the last good king. He reigned for like 30 years. He was a great king. He was one of the, you know, one of the gems of the kings of Judah. Wonderful king. And this is the recording of his death. In his days, in Josiah's days, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up to the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates. And King Josiah went to meet him, and then Pharaoh Necho saw him and killed him at Megiddo. His servants drove his body in chariots from Megiddo and brought him to Jerusalem and buried him in his own tomb. Then the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and anointed him and made him king in the place of his father. What historically, what happened here with Josiah he got in the middle of a war between the Babylonians and Egypt. He got right in the middle of it because the Egyptians were coming through Israel to fight the Babylonians and Josiah tried to stop Egypt. Um, and this actually historically is known as the Battle of Chemosh. It's really the first battle that Babylon really gave it to Egypt and had a major um, win against the nation of Egypt. And it's historically, in the Babylonian Chronicles, there's this battle of Chemosh is in there. And this is when Josiah died. He died. This great king, uh, the last great king of Judah died. All right? And um, again, so that's the first thing here on this chart, uh, these chapters, the death of King Josiah. And then his son, Jehoahaz, reigns. All right? You follow it? His son Jehoahaz reigns, and he reigns three months. And it says in verse 31, Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. He did evil in the sight of Yahweh, according to all his fathers had done. Pharaoh Necho imprisoned him at Riblah in the land of Hamath, and he might not reign in Jerusalem. And he imposed on the land a fine of 100 talents of silver and a talent of gold. Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, king in place of Josiah, his father, and changed his name to Jehoiakim. But he took Jehoahaz away and brought him to Egypt, and he died there. So, the first son of Josiah that was made king reigned for three months. He was evil, did evil in the sight of the Lord. The king of Egypt came, took him away, took him down to Egypt, and then made his brother, who was the second son of Josiah, Eliakim, changed his name to Jehoiakim, and he now becomes king. So now the second son of Josiah is king. Jehoahaz ended up dying in Egypt. He never came back. That's where he died, down in Egypt. All right? So now Jeho Jehoiakim is king, and he reigns 11 years. Verse 35, so Jehoiakim gave the silver and gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land. Verse 36, Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Zibda, Zabida, the daughter of Padiah of Rumah, and he did evil in the sight of Yahweh, according to all his fathers had done. So he does evil. In his days... Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant for three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. little side note, the book of Daniel says that in the third year of Jehoiakim's reign, the one we're talking about here, that's when Nebuchadnezzar came, and that's when Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were taken into captivity into Babylon during this reign of Jehoiakim, the second son of Josiah. All right? In the third year of his reign, that's when Daniel was taken into captivity. So that happened right here during this time. And the Lord sent against him bands of Chaldeans, bands of Armenians, bands of Moabites, bands of Ammonites. So he sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of Yahweh, which he had spoken through his servants of the prophets. Surely at the command of Yahweh it came upon Judah to remove them from his sight because of the sins of Manasseh, that was Josiah's father, according to all he had done. And so, 
also for the innocent blood which he shed, for he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, and Yahweh would not forgive. Now the rest of the Acts of Jehoiakim are written in the book of Chronicles, verse 6. So Jehoiakim, that's here, Jehoiakim dies. Uh, we're right here right now. This is Jehoiakim dies. Jehoiakim dies, slept with his fathers, and Jehoiachin, his son, became king in his stead. So now the son of Jehoiakim becomes king, Jehoiachin. This is the grandson of Josiah. Not his son, this is his grandson, Jehoiachin. And he reigns three months. Verse 7, the king of Egypt did not come out of his land, for the king of Babylon had taken all that belonged to the king of Egypt. Verse 8, Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Deshuda, daughter of El Nathan. He did evil in the sight of Yahweh. So he does evil. Verse 10. Now, this is where we get into understanding the time of Ezekiel. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, went up to Jerusalem, and the city came under siege. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to the city while his servants were besieging it. Jehoiachin, the king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon, he and his mother and his servants and his captains and his officials. So the king of Babylon took him captive in the eighth year of his reign, in the eighth year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign. He carried out from there all the treasures of the house of God, the Lord, Yahweh, and treasures of the king's house, and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in the temple of Yahweh, just as Yahweh had said. And he led away captive in exile all Jerusalem, and all the captains, and all the mighty men of valor, 10,000 captives, and all the craftsmen and the smiths. None remained except the poorest people of the land. So he led Jehoiachin away into exile to Babylon. Also the king's mother and the king's wives and his officials and the leading men of land he led away into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, that route that I showed you. And all the men of valor, 7,000 craftsmen, smiths, 1,000 all strong, fit for war, these the king of Babylon brought into exile to Babylon. One of those exiles among this 10,000 was Ezekiel. Ezekiel was brought into captivity with, at this time with Jehoiachin. So the timing of Jehoiachin's captivity is where you'll see that the book of Ezekiel references time frames with. That was right here. Now, here's what happens for the last 11 years that Judah's still a nation. Then the king of Babylon made his uncle... Mataniah king in his place. So he takes the grandson Jehoiachin of Josiah, takes him away captive, takes his uncle Mataniah, changes his name to Zedekiah. <laughs> so Zedekiah is the third son of Josiah. He's Jehoiachin's uncle, but he's the third son of King Josiah. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And his mother name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah. He did evil in the sight of Yahweh, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For through the anger of Yahweh, this came about in Jerusalem until Jude, and Judah until he cast them out from his presence. And Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. So before I go on, just to show you, re recap here on this chart, Josiah had one son, Jehoahaz. He reigned for three months. That was number one. One. Jehoahaz. He reigned three months. He was taken into captivity by the Egyptians. He died in Egypt. Only reigned three months. Took his brother, who became, who became Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim is the second son of Josiah. He reigns 11 years. All right? In the third year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar comes up against him and he takes Daniel and those guys, that small group, to Babylon. 
After 11 years, he dies. His son, Jehoiachin, who's the grandson of Josiah, is king three months. Nebuchadnezzar comes up against him. He takes Jehoiachin and 10,000 of Israel into exile into Babylon. And then they make his uncle, Mataniah, who is Zedekiah. This is the third son of Ezekiel. And he reigns for the last 11 years. All right? Zedekiah is the third son of Josiah. Did I say Ezekiel? Yeah. The third son of Josiah. So those are the three sons. But the important one in, is the grandson of Josiah, Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin. And he was taken into captivity in Babylon. Along with him came Ezekiel. And now in chapter 25, it says, In the ninth year of his reign, talking about the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his army against Jerusalem, camped against it, built a siege wall all around it, so the city was under siege until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah, on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine was so severe in the land that there was no food for the people of the land. Then the city was broken into all the men of war, fled by night by way of the gate between the two walls, besides the garden's gate, around the, though the Chaldeans were all around the city, and they went by the way of the Araba. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king, overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. They captured the king and brought him to the king of Babylon at Riblah, and he passed sentence on him. They slaughtered the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, then put out the eyes of Zedekiah and brought him with bronze fetters and brought him to Babylon. So the three sons of Josiah, the one is taken down into Egypt, he dies there. The other one dies after 11 years, uh, never did much. And then the third one here, uh, Zedekiah, is captured, he's taken, he's, all his sons are brought before him, they kill all his sons, and then they cut his eyes out, and he's brought in bondage into Babylon. Those are the last three sons, um, and those are, those are the kings that were right here at the end of the time of Judah. And in verse 8, now on the seventh day of the fifth month, which was the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. He burned the house of Yahweh, the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, every great house, he burned with fire. So this was the end of Judah. This was the end of the temple. This was, it was over. At this point, it was over. And then they carried the rest of the people, it says, Anybody left except for the very poor of the land, they carried the remaining exiles into Babylon after the temple was destroyed. And that's the third uh, exiles that came into Babylon. So, and you'll see here what they did is, is they, they starved the people out for like a year and a half, a year and six months, seven months. They surrounded the city and they sieged Jerusalem and they starved the people out and then they just took over the city and defeated Jerusalem. All this of this reign of Zedekiah. Now I'll go back to Ezekiel. So, listen carefully because this helps. The reign of Zedekiah, king in Jerusalem, we'll say this Jerusalem, and the captivity of Jehoiakim, all right, are the same time frame. Because he was in captivity while he's king. All right? So in the tenth year, in the, in the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign is the ninth year of Jehoiakim's captivity. Which is also the ninth year of Ezekiel's captivity. All right? All the references of time here in Ezekiel are referenced to this time of captivity. So let's go back now to Ezekiel chapter 1. Verse 1. It says, Now it came about in the 30th year, that's the 30th year of, of Ezekiel's life, when he was 30 years old. On the fifth day of the fourth month, while I was by the river Chibar, among the exiles, the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. On the fifth of the month, in the fifth year of Jehoiakim's captivity, or exile, the word of Yahweh came expressly to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi. 
in the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's exile, which was also Ezekiel's exile. In the fifth year, um, is, so he'd been there five years. So he got there when he was 25 years old. And when he's 30 years old by the river Chabar, the fifth year of captivity, he starts getting visions from God. Things start to happen. Um, just to show you, the book of Ezekiel is one of the, it's actually one of the easier books to follow chronology in the Old Testament. Um, just look at these. These are in your notes, but, and they're up here on the chart. In 8.1, well, you, you can look at them on your own, but you can see in Ezekiel 8.1, you'll see it says it's in the sixth year. Sixth month, fifth day. Sixth year of what? Sixth year of captivity. Sixth year of Jehoiakim's captivity. Ezekiel 21. Seventh year, fifth month, tenth day. Seventh year of what? Seventh year of captivity. 24. The ninth year, tenth month, tenth day of his captivity. 29. One. The tenth year, tenth month, twelfth day of his captivity. 33, 21, the twelfth, twelfth year, tenth month, fifth day of his captivity. You got it? That's how the book of Ezekiel lays out chronologically through the first 33 chapters. And then you jump into Ezekiel 40 in the 25th year of his captivity, beginning, the tenth, the beginning of the year, the tenth day of the month, the 14th year after the city was smitten. And then in the re remaining chapters of Ezekiel, he gives the revelation of a restored temple. Um, Fourteen years after the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. And that's Ezekiel 40, verse 1. So that's how these all lay out. Now, um, i show you this chart. You see this date right here, which I have in your chart, um, 586 B.C. That number, that year date, is what almost all scholars agree on is the date and the year that the Babylonians destroyed the first temple. That that destruction of the temple occurred in 586 B.C. All right? So that's, the, that's where I get this date from. Whether that's right or not, I don't know, but it gives a nice reference for us to count backwards or forwards from as far as timing things. Now, how many years did Zedekiah reign? We read it in 11 years. So how many years have they been in captivity when the temple's destroyed? Had Ezekiel been in captivity? 11 years, right? So if you count go backwards, nine... 597 B.C., Ezekiel, that's when he's brought into Babylon into captivity. All right? You got it? Was in 597 B.C. He's there five years, and in 592 B.C., the book begins. In captivity, in the fifth year of captivity. All right? So then all these chapters up to verse 33, you see this? Cover only, we're only talking about uh, eight years, seven years, from 592 to 585 B.C. It goes to the 12th year. My point is, this revelation that we're going to look at for the majority of it, up until verse chapter 33, Jerusalem is still a functioning city. Jerusalem still has a king, a messiah, a mashiach of Yahweh, ruling for Yahweh, supposedly for Yahweh. The temple is still in existence. There is still priests that are supposed to be serving the one true God. There are princes that are supposed to be serving the one true God in Jerusalem. All right? But Ezekiel is over here in captivity with 10,000 Judeans. And it's to those people that Ezekiel prophesies. And this sets kind of what sets what happens here in the book of Ezekiel. 
He is a man in captivity who's minding his own business one day, hanging out by the river, and Yahweh calls him. And he, and he, be, he gives him, you, you are going to see some amazing revelation that this man gets. Incredible truth. You see, he's going to tell, before it happens, exactly what the Babylonians are going to do. Details that he's given. Imagery that he's given. He's going to give details of the heart-wrenching heart of God as to why this judgment is going to come upon this people. And he is going to explicitly show the incredible, ugly idolatry that is going on in Jerusalem. And all these chapters, some of it's really even hard to read. Some of it's uh, hard to share because of of how uh, vivid imagery that is given to this man of the heart of God regarding this. Um, Before I go on, just two quick little things. You see this verse 3 in Ezekiel? Um, It says, And there there the hand of the Lord came upon him. Do you know, this I just, and I looked at this, it's the only place in the entire book of Ezekiel that's in the third person. All the rest of it, Ezekiel is me. It's in the first person, except for that verse right there. Just a little tidbit, I just find that interesting. That it's the only place in the entire book where it's given in the third person. But anyways, that's another side note, where it says that the Lord, hand of the Lord came upon him. Another thing, too, this phrase, hand of the Lord, hand of the Lord, do you know that that only occurs in the book of Ezekiel? No other place in the Bible. It occurs seven times. I don't have these in the notes if you want to write these down, if you're interested. The hand of the Lord... Um, is used in Ezekiel, here, Ezekiel 1, 3. It's used in Ezekiel 3, verse 14. It's used in Ezekiel 3, verse 22. It's used in Ezekiel 8, 1. It's used in Ezekiel 33, 22. It's used in Ezekiel 37, verse 1. And it's used in Ezekiel 40, verse 1. So I'll give those to you again. Hand of the Lord, only used here in the book of Ezekiel, used Ezekiel 1, 3, chapter 3, verse 14, chapter 3, verse 22, chapter 8, verse 1, chapter 33, verse 22, chapter 37, verse 1, and chapter 40, verse 1. I think... The hand of Yahweh came upon him. Uh, it's a, just a very unique use. I'd like to explore that more sometime, but uh, I just find that interesting that it's the only place it's used in the Bible is here relating to this man, Ezekiel. So we are going to look at this man, Ezekiel, who receives visions and revelation while captive in Babylon. Although he and more than 10,000 Judeans were in captivity, the city of Jerusalem was still being ruled by a Judean king, King Zedekiah, the last king of Judah. There were still many people living in Jerusalem. The temple was still standing. The priest's office was still being enacted. Much of the revelation presented to Ezekiel was given before The temple was destroyed. Ezekiel presents vivid revelation about its destruction, as well as exposing the horrendous sins, the abominations, the idolatrous practices of the children of Israel. In Ezekiel is speaking to men and women who are in captivity. The judgment of God has been passed. It's going to happen. 
This train is rolling here in Ezekiel. This judgment is for sure and certain, and it will take place. God tells Ezekiel, and we're going to look at this next week, that the house of Israel will not listen to him. They're not going to listen to you. And yet, he's commanded to speak as God's watchman, as the watchman of God, of Yahweh. Through the prophecy spoken by Ezekiel, and I hope that you, you get this by the end of this class, it is written so that these people would know that God is Yahweh, that Yahweh is God. That phrase that you will know when this happens, you will know that I am Yahweh occurs 63 times in the book of Ezekiel. You, you, sometimes when we were studying this, we scratched our heads saying, why? Why is he doing this? They're not going to listen to him. Why? So that we can sit here today, in the year 2014, and we can read this, and we can know that God is Yahweh, that he means what he says, and the things that he said are certain. The things that he said that were going to happen in the past happened. And then when we get to the final chapters, of the later chapters of Ezekiel, after chapter 33, the, I can tell you the first... Um, well, uh, let me tell you a little bit about how we're going to do this, because there's no way we can cover this verse by verse and chapter by chapter. It's, it's just too much. The first couple of weeks here, we are going to go chronologically through the chapters. Starting in about week three we're going to switch and we're going to do kind of topical studies. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll take topics just because there's too much information to cover it all. So we'll do topical studies. And one of the things you'll find is that the first part of Ezekiel is a lot of judgment. It's a lot of revelation about the sins and, and there's a lot of it. A lot of things about the judgment that's going to come upon the land, the judgment that's going to come upon the prophets, the judgment that's coming upon the nations. And then... In the end, after chapter 33, what you'll see in the book of Ezekiel is the restoration and the promised hope, the promised restoration of the land, the restoration of the temple, the restoration of life. So we're going to start and switch and do things topically to kind of show you the, the, what, ha, what the judgment is and what the future hope is. And then uh, when we get to the very last couple uh, weeks, we're going to look at, there's some incredible revelation about the nations. Specifically, very in, unique, I, I think it's really going to bless you, we're going to look at the judgment on Tyre, and then the judgment on Egypt. Just incredible truths. Uh, eight chapters on just those two nations in the book of Ezekiel. It's uh, amazing information that is communicated about those nations. And then the last week, we're going to end with looking at the resurrection and the great truth about the end times of what's given in the book of Ezekiel. So, hold on to your seats. It's going to be quite, quite a show looking at these visions that was given to this prophet in bondage, in captivity, and yet the hand of Yahweh came mightily upon this man and he revealed some incredible truths. So, um, after the break, we'll take a look at that, all right?